We're pleased to be joined by Dr. Sagar Parikh, who is interventional pain physician at JFK Johnson Rehabilitation. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, by the way, what is an interventional pain physician? Sure, okay. Um, so as an interventional pain physician, I have been trained to do image-guided uh, injections, nerve blocks or joint uh, blocks, uh, to relieve pain. Uh, that could be anything from x-ray-guided or ultrasound. So there's just two different uh, utilities that we can use to actually see inside mm -hmm. the body and really get to a specific source uh, or a pain generator, as we call it. You know, you said to me uh, right before we got on the air, I said, oh, you know, we're going to talk about the opioid problem, the crisis. You said, yeah, but the bigger discussion is, quote, rethinking pain. Why right. do you say that? Well, so, uh, I mean, and I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the big topic right now, obviously, is the, the opioid crisis. And it's, it's worthwhile to uh, figure out how we got here, and then we can kind of think about why we need to rethink pain. Um, you know, we have all know the statistics. 91 people a day die from op opioid overdoses. Uh, annually in, in, in the nation, the, roughly is 33,000 people. That's a lot. New Jersey alone, 1,600. So it's a huge crisis, and it, it was driven from, I feel, uh, a, a real push to kind of treat pain, which is a very noble thing. Um, but uh, two decades ago, there was this sort of uh, a campaign, pain is the fifth vital sign. Um, you may have heard of it before. Mm. Um, and so it, the campaign was to kind of treat pain, address pain, treat it. And at that point, the only utility that most people had were, were opioids. Um, and that is a problem, and I'll tell you why. Uh, so. A vital sign. Do you know what a, a vital sign is? Well, yeah, right. you check my blood pressure. Right. It's just a vital sign. Exactly. So it's an objective measure. Uh, blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, you can't fake it. Those are all objective measures that we can measure. But now with pain, uh, we don't have an objective tool. To One measure. to ten. What do you, uh, I don't know, six? Exactly. Because that's not a vital sign. It's not. It's, it's a very subjective answer. And what I've found through my practice is that zero to ten pain scale is really a suffering scale because pain is complex. Uh, pain is, you know, there's a, a very, very intelligent uh, psychologist, actually. His name was Ronald Melzack. Uh, and he came up with something called the pain is the, uh, the pain neuromatrix. What that is is essentially, obviously, we all have brains. And think of your brain as a big circuit. And whatever, we, whatever inputs we receive from the world or from anything, even an injury, goes through that circuit and then outputs a certain response. Um, so, for example, if, you, if, I, if, if I get into a motor vehicle accident and I hurt my neck, that input is now going into my brain and it's outputting a pain response. I feel pain. But what Melzack was proposing is that it's not just the physical thing mm. that drives pain. It's an emotional aspect of it. Let's say someone's been in chronic pain for three to four, five months, six months, years. It's that emotional aspect to that pain and what it's kept that person from doing. But how do you treat it. that? Exactly. So, the first, the first way to treat that is to recognize that pain is complex. You have, you have the, the physical body injury, you have emotional aspects, you have cultural, cognitive. And once we figure that out, we realize that we need to not just be a one-trick pony. We have to really practice what I think is comprehensive pain management. I'll give you an example. So we uh, here at, at JFK Johnson Rehabilitation Institute, uh, we have myself, who is an interventional pain physician, and I work with uh, patients to figure out where a pain generator would be. So, for example, if this is, if I have a patient. That's the vertebrae. This is the vertebrae. Um, lower back pain is a huge, huge, huge issue. Yeah, talk to me. So, exactly. L4, L5, where is that, by the way? L4, L5, if this is L5 and that's L4. So. I'm just checking. Right there, yeah. <laughs> so, if, th if you think about it, you have the disc, the nerve, yes. joints, you have ligaments and muscles that you don't see on this, on this uh, spine. So, all of that together can be a pain generator. Now, on top of that, if you're dealing with someone with chronic pain, uh, they may have some, a mild, some mild depression, some emotional aspect to it. Yes, the pain. Wait, a hold on. Yes. When I had a disc that had come out, it was extruded, yeah. right? Which yeah. means the jelly came out, whatever. You right. know, the, it's out. I had the surgery. Right. What does that have to do with depression? All right, I'll tell you why. So you were treated probably in a very, a very well, in the sense of we found the acute injury. Yep. You treated it. You went through rehab. Yes. And, and you got back on your feet. You got, you got to a functional state, yep. and you're independent again. So a lot of people don't get that treatment sometimes, and they live with this pain for a very, very, very long time. Does it mess with your head? It can. It does, to some degree. So what I, what I have in, in, my, sort of in my team, I have physical therapists, exercise specialists, sometimes even personal trainers. 
I have a, a pain psychologist on staff that's very good at treating those aspects of it. Uh, we have complementary medicine, acupuncture, uh, some water therapy, um, and then, and obviously, I, I, I'm skilled in doing uh, pain interventions. But you're the coach. I'm the coach, so exactly. You're the point guard. You're the coach. You decide what the whole game plan is, and as part of it, trying to avoid using the heavy painkillers? Yes. Uh, I'm not against opioids completely. Opioids have a role, but I think, especially when it comes to musculoskeletal injuries, our, our goal should be, we'll try to get them out of pain quickly, but then there's got to be a goal to wean off the medications and get them independent and stronger. Oftentimes, when I'm talking to patients, uh, I'm working on not just the aspects that I just talked about. I also ask them about their nutrition, their sleep patterns, uh, their motivational. I can talk to you about motivation because I know you're a motivational speaker. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate all those aspects because I know for someone to feel well and not to suffer, they're going to need to feel functional again. Well, how did you get this understanding? The time we have left, how did you get this sense that the whole, whole list, the whole mind, body, emotional, spiritual, where did you get that? Uh, so, it's, it's, I mean, I've had a lot of experiences uh, growing up with, with yoga, with meditation, with all these things. But really, what it came down to is when I was treating patients in my office, and you know, I, I can tell you one, one story, one real example quick. of a woman. Real quick. So, she, wa she was walking, she would be able to walk five minutes, but then feel that, she's in, that she couldn't walk anymore. She was in too much pain. I was able to get her to a point where she can walk a mile, two miles. So, I was able to functionally improve her physical state of being yet she still reported a 9 out of 10 pain. And I thought, listen, we, we, we got you so good, why right. are you still 9 out of 10? That's when I realized, wow, there's all these other components to it. And that's when I would start doing a lot of reading to figure out, okay, if I'm going to make someone feel well and feel independent and better, I'm going to need to be the coach. They, they're my athlete. I got to train them to, to be able to do exercise, to be able to do this, be able to do the things they love. I need to focus on that. I can't just do one thing and think that I'm doing my job. You can't just give them a pill. You can't just Definitely say, here, not. take these pain pill killers. Uh, pain pills and you know and that's it right. finish the bottle will be good and that's why I think we need to rethink pain in that realm we got to think of pain on all these different la layers and to get someone to feel that they're not suffering anymore and then we will get our pain scores down Dr. Well said and you've helped us understand and potentially rethink pain in a way that makes a lot more sense um, and also potentially deal with this opioid uh, problem at the same time we appreciate it very educational thank you doctor thank you